What's up everybody, this is Mark Miller from Ichiban Games and this is our game Peacock Block. This is a how to play video. We have the uh, cards open faced to show play and everything that is on the board here. So this is a game that is all about cock blocking, but you're a bunch of peacocks at a party. The peahen here is the goal or uh, other peacock for, you know, since every character is double-sided, is the goal. And then you have the deck, you have the feather bank, the, the uh, discard pile, the ring discard pile, you have your hand, you have these reference cards, and you have the flirt scale love meter here with the token. And you have your character and the feathers. So the object of the game, obviously, is to try and attract the love of the peahen. This game has two game modes, which has a quick mode for a one round play and a extended version, which uses the love meter with multiple rounds. To determine first player, you can determine it any way you wish. Normally I go and I say the person that asks who is the first player is the one to be the first player, just for comical reasons, and make that happen. Players will have four cards, and they will always have four cards at the end of the turn. So to play this game, you have one of three actions. You know, one of your actions, you could play a card. When you do, you play the card, you put it to the discard pile, and you gain its benefits. And then you will draw a card. Every player will always have four cards in their hand, no matter which player it is at the start of their turn. The other thing that you could do is you could discard all your cards and put them to their respected piles. And notice the ring piece goes into a discard pile in itself. And then you draw back up to your full hand size. The third action you could do is you can exchange a ring piece for a ring piece. And that is your turn. First way to go and win is by flirting, which you will get 10 on your flirt scale. And the player to get 10 on their flirt scale in the quick version, one round will win the game. And with the extended version, that would end the round for the person that gets 10 on their scale would get one point for winning the round, and then for every feather on their peacock would get an additional point, and then everything would reset that round for the next round. All feathers would go back to five feathers. This flirt scale goes down to zero. The love meter, however, does not for the extended game. All cards would get discarded, back into the deck and reshuffled, and then the new cards would be shuffled back out into the next round. The other way to win is by getting 10 feathers on your peacock, and the other way to win is by getting all three pieces of the ring and laying them down all at the same time. So that's the three win conditions. So the first way to go and win the game is you get 10 on your flirt scale. When you get 10 on your flirt scale, you win the game. You do that by fl playing flirt cards. And when you do that, uh, you go up on your flirt scale. So play a flirt two, get his benefits. My turn is done. It goes to the next player over here. But players can play block cards on their turn and negate a player's flirt scale. So player two is going to block player one. Flirts will come in flirt one, flirt two, and flirt three. Blocks will come in block one, block two, and block three. 
and they will also come in ultra blocks. Played singular as a minus one to a player, or if two are played at the same time as one action, it can be a minus five to a player or minus three to all other players. A dual ultra block cannot be sidestepped, which I will go over what sidestep is in a little bit. The other way to win the game is by growing feathers. You will play grow feather cards to put a feather into your peacock from the feather bank. But players on their turn will play pluck cards, which will take a feather from another player and put it back to the feather bank. Grow feather cards come in a singular growing of a feather or growing two feathers. For plucks, you will have a pluck one or a pluck two, which a pluck two can pluck two feathers from one player or a feather each from two different players. Players have an invisible card slot that is for what's called a trigger card. A trigger card is a shake or a strut. When a player plays a shake or a strut, they will put that in front of them in their trigger card slot. If it makes it around to the back to the player without their feather being plucked, the player will reap the benefits of the shake or the strut. It goes to the discard pile, and then they will be able to play a card from their hand. That slot is back open, so another trigger card slot can be put in there. Remember, only one trigger card can be put into that slot. So a trigger card is a shake, which will be able to have a player get three points and minus somebody by one, or a strut, which a player can play two additional actions on their turn. If an opponent player plucks a shake or a strut, it will go into the discard pile. And if it was a shake, in play, it minuses the player by one because they were in the process of shaking. They also lose their feather. Player two plays a card against player one called Rufflesome Feathers. This card allows player two to blindly draw a card from player one and immediately play it if they wish or if they can. Player two blindly takes a card from player one and they can play that card immediately if they wish which player two gets two points on their flirt scale players will draw back up to their maximum hand size it is possible for player two to play the ruffle some feathers blindly draw the ultra block from player one, take as their action to combo it with the second ultra block to use as one action. This can also be done with the ring. Which makes the win. The next cards to talk about are the squabble and the cockfight. These cards cause a lot of different kinds of chaos. When somebody plays a squabble or a cockfight, they will draw back up to their maximum hand size. With a squabble, after the maximum hand size has been reached by all players, the player who initiated the squabble will take every player's cards look at them shuffle them back up and redistribute the other kind of card that causes chaos is the cockfight this card, when it is played, 
every player will draw up to their maximum hand size. After a cockfight is initiated, notice in the upper left hand corner of the cards, there is a value for the cockfight. This is what takes precedent. Every player is now in the cockfight. The value will be from zero to seven. In a cockfight, the highest cockfight value on a card will take a feather from a player with the lowest cockfight value in a card. What will happen is every player will take a card that they wish from their hand and they will play it face down and at the, the count of three or whenever anybody is ready, everybody will flip and expose the card and the lowest will have a feather taken from them by the highest player. Let's say that players one, two, and five are all in the cockfight. Player one has a five, player two has a one, and player three has a six. Player three would end up getting the feather from player number two and put it into their peacock. All cards that are played get discarded and everyone redraws starting with the player that initiated the cockfight. If it is a ring piece that is to get discarded, it goes back to the ring discard pile. When a cockfight is played, ties do happen. The highest players that tie will have to battle again, and so do the lowest players that tie. So there will be another battle for the winner of the highest and another battle for those with the lowest. The highest that battle, if they tie again, will be tired out, and the next in the pecking order will take precedent to go and get the feather from the player that has the lowest. When players are tied for lowest and then they battle again and then they tie once more, that means those players are the losers and will give each a feather to the winner of the cockfight. Let's say that there are five players in a cockfight, three being tied for highest, two being tied for lowest. So, two will be battling to be the loser, three will be battling to be the winner. Let's say for the players that are tied for highest, have two sixes and a five. The players that have the two sixes, well, they get tired automatically, even though it is the second battle. The player with the five would actually be the victor because those two sixes would cancel each other out. But let's say that the two players for the tying for lowest, one has a three and the other one has a two. Those players would have the player with the three be the winner of that. So the loser, who is the two, would have their feather taken and put into the winner of the hires peacock. Let's say there's a situation of, say, a three-player game where there are two players for highest and one player for lowest. Well, the two players, let's say they both have fives and they tie for the second time. Well, what happens is the lowest will not have anything happen to them at all. Let's say there's a scenario of four players in a cockfight. Let's say that the higher players tie with two fives and the lower players had tied with two threes. Well, when these players go and battle again, let's say these two players for highest end up where they had two fours. So they get tired out. But let's say the players for lowest 
have a five and a four. The one with the five will take a feather from the peacock with the four. Another card that we need to talk about is a sidestep. A sidestep is a card that could be played as a reaction card to somebody playing a inclusive or negative action against another player. It is the only card that is not played on a player's turn. Let's say player two plays a pluck two against player one. Player one will then sidestep that pluck, meaning player one will not be plucked by player two. However, a sidestep can sidestep a sidestep. So let's say player two plays another sidestep. That would mean that player one will get their feathers plucked. At the end of that turn, each player will draw up to their maximum hand size. Let's say that player two has played a shake and the shake goes off where the minus is acted towards player one. Well, player one can play a sidestep to block that minus one. The other interesting thing about a sidestep is that a player can go and play a cockfight or a squabble and then sidestep out of it so everybody else battles it out. We'll draw back up. And now all the other players are initiated in the cockfight. The final way to win is when a player gets all three pieces of the ring. They have to go and assemble the ring all at the same time on their turn. It cannot be played one piece on one turn and then another piece on another turn. It has to be played all at the same time. When a player assembles the ring, they win the game. Thank you everybody for checking out this how to play video of the game and please check out more games that we have with Ichiban Games. Thank you and have a good day.